Our program tonight is titled uh, Eudora's Inventor and Visionary, Dr. Leo Lauber. Uh, and our program tonight is going to be delivered by uh, Dr. Lauber's son, Mark Lauber. He's very nice to come and do this for us. Uh, many of you probably knew uh, Doc Lauber, and so hopefully this will bring back some memories. Those of you that didn't, hopefully you learned something new, because I, as I think you'll learn, uh, he left a, a really large impact on this community. And I think it's fitting that we kind of... Uh, learn about that, and we kind of document that here tonight. Uh, Dr. Lauber was the town's chiropractor, an inventor, a successful businessman, a real estate developer, the driving force behind the creation of the InTech Business Park, a member of the City Council, a member of the City Planning Commission, and a member of the Eudora Alliance Club. Um, so he was quite active here in town, and although he sadly passed away about six years ago, his legacy uh, endures in this community, and I think we all uh, know that. And so we're really thrilled uh, tonight that Mark can be with us here. So everyone, please welcome Mark Lauber. Thank you, thank you. I didn't realize how many of my uh, kids were going to be here. My dad's sister is here tonight. Uh, it's unbelievable. Anyway. Leo was born January 12, 1926, in Kansas City, Kansas, at St. Mary's Hospital. Grew up in Kansas City, Kansas, and even at a young age, his first business was with his dad, raising and selling chicken fryers. He actually, in Pomeroy, Kansas, he actually had a mechanical chicken plucker to do most of the work. And his dad and him then delivered the fresh chickens all over that area. He graduated from rural Washington High School in 1943 and was president of his class. Uh, of course, then World War II reared its ugly head, and so he enlisted in the Army in July 5th of 1946 and was stationed overseas and aimed and fired 105 howitzers. Uh, was discharged from the Army in May of 49. Then he later attended KU and later graduated from Cleveland Chiropractic College. When he was going to KU, he would have to drive through Eudora and always admire the little town. Uh, married Jean Lee Levendusky. June 2nd of 1950, and then opened a practice in Kansas City, Kansas on Parallel Road. Uh, moved to Eudora in 1959 and opened an office at the top of Main Street in the old theater building, which you've got a picture of it up there. And Eudora is where he wanted to raise his kids which Mark, Chris, Joy, David, and the twins were <laughs> contained. <laughs> he later turned the lobby of the theater into a coin-operated laundry. That was one of my first jobs when I was 12 years old, was to keep the washing machines and the dryers going, filling the pop machine, the candy machines, the, uh, keeping the, the change machine filled. He also was one of the first people to have a coin-operated dry cleaning machine, which he was always looking for new technology, uh, as we well know. He also had a hot coffee and cocoa vending machine scattered over the area, which he had to service on a almost daily basis, Lawrence, surrounding communities. Uh, the name of that company was LOAD. What that means, I have no idea. But it meant something to him. Uh, the laundry burned in 1966, uh, which was where his office was also. So Stan Burns was just, the, the uh, pharmacy at, uh, on 10th Street was just, hadn't been open too long, so he moved his office into the basement of that. That's where we start with the OCL thing. Uh, 
he was he, he would go to orthopedic conventions all over the country to learn new skills for his chiropractic practice. And at one of the conventions, they spilled plaster on the carpet. And it cost them money to get it cleaned up. And they got back to the office and said, there's got to be a better way to put casts on people. And so that was the advent of the OCL plaster cast, which was basically foam and flannel with layers of plaster in between. You just dipped it in warm water, wrapped it on the offending limb, and it set up, and that was that. There was no messy plaster. <coughs> uh, the production of that took place in his office. The first production took place in his office under Stan Burns' pharmacy. Chris Lauber, my uh, younger brother, he was the one that was the production guy. He had just barely gotten out of high school, and he was making this stuff for them cervical collars, lumbar supports. Uh, this was about 1974. Patent was granted to Clear Corporation, which was another one of his corporations, on January 26th of 1979. And <coughs> orders slowly came in and finally had to move the production to this building here. It was upstairs in downtown Eudora. Most of the production was upstairs, and we actually had to build an elevator up the back of the building to get all the heavy plaster and everything upstairs. Uh, Chris was in charge of hiring the people to, I mean, he'd go around Eudora, somebody walking down the street, you need a job uh, for seamstress for sewing and laying out the plaster and, and making the uh, the cast. Uh, that was other, another one of my jobs was to keep the sewing machines running. Um, yeah, we outgrew that location and then finally moved production to the old Craftsman Marble Building on East 22nd Street. That was in 1977. Uh, and they sold product all over the world. Shortly thereafter, he started thinking about the business park other, to give back to the people of Eudora and have some employment instead of just a bedroom community, which basically that's what Eudora was. And so they started thinking about the business park. And the obvious place was the Charlie Nice Farm out east of town where the business park is. But Charlie didn't want to sell but Leo found out that Charlie liked the Cordell farm out north of town. So he bought the farm and finally traded Charlie for his farm. That was in 1985. And then Leo started working with the Von Aachen architects in January of 1986 for the design of the administration building, which I think is still one of the best looking buildings in town. Uh, the contract was awarded to Harris Construction Company in February of 1987, and the building was complete in December of 87. Then shortly thereafter, Leo built his new house out there on the on the east edge of the uh, of the business park. And as uh, Ben said, that Leo was on the planning commission, the city council, the school board. He was also on Eco 2, which was kind of the K-10 corridor thing. I think there's a, a, a brochure up there from that. Uh, he was also very active in the Land Institute, which was for sustainable land use and agriculture. He really, that was one of his pet projects. Administration building was built. They were still using the Craftsman Marble building. And R&D continued uh, in such as soft sole uh, for heel support, uh, which David, my brother, was the head of that. For, and then they were also doing synthet synthetic casting materials that were waterproof. Because plaster, you know, once you put it on, you get it wet, it falls apart. So they were working on that. Uh, OCL merged with Martin Worldwide 
1989, Jim Martin was a uh, small business guy that built cast saws in Minnesota. And they merged with them and they built the new production facility and warehouse, which is to the north of the administration building out at the Intech Park. Uh, they also purchased, shortly thereafter, a plaster oven because in the USA there were only three plaster manufacturers and one of them was going out of business and they didn't want to be caught because plaster is very heavy to ship uh, and it was a very important part of their product so they actually bought the plaster oven and moved it into the production facility so they would not be caught without any product. Uh, so they'd have a steady source of supply and they end up selling it too to other people. Uh, Martin Worldwide bought OCL in 1991 and a little sidebar on the OCL. A lot of people in Eudora thought OCL stood for Olson, Coleman, and Lauber. <laughs> <laughs> but it did not. It was Orthopedic Casting Laboratory because my dad and uh, Miss Alf Olson and uh, Al Coleman, they always hung out together. And everybody thought that that's what that stood for, was Olson and Coleman and Lover. Leo retired in July of 90, but he did really not stop inventing. Uh, he had a couple other projects after he retired. He invented the tape mouse. I meant to bring one of them up, but I, I forgot it. I'll, I'll get it to Ben and let him uh, put it on display, still in the original package. That's one of them that didn't, you know, do very well. He also was working with a local carpenter and they invented a big thing to put in doorways to square up doorways to hang doors. They called it Jam King. That didn't go very well. Uh, passed away unfortunately August 13, 2008. Uh, I've got a, about three funny sidebars here. Uh, Shortly after they built the administration building, uh, all the employees wanted bottled water in the water coolers. And this kind of irritated me. He was, he was pretty close. He was raised in the Depression era. And so rather than tell them no, they couldn't have it, he would just go around at night and fill the bottles up with Eudora tap water. <laughs> and nobody ever knew the difference. <laughs> but ever knew the difference. Another one was, and I don't know what year it was, but some of the employees have told me this. On St. Patrick's Day, my dad dyed his hands and arms green for St. Patrick's Day, for his party. And the head of marketing came to him after he'd already done it and said, you know, Leo, we have people coming in, the international distributors, for a big meeting, and now you have green hands and arms. And he used cake coloring, so it wasn't going to come off really, really quick. So for that meeting, he had to wear gloves, and he told everybody he had a, a hand irritation. <laughs> The other one was one of his head salesmen, Jeannie Norris. I don't know, some of you might know her. Uh, she lived out uh, west and a little bit south of here. They were trying out new product, and they were trying to develop a walking cast. And so they put casts on both of her feet. Let it set up to see how it worked come to find out, after it set up, they did not have a cast saw to cut it off. <laughs> so they put her in a wheelchair and wheeled her up to, uh, I never can remember his name, uh, Wurzberger, there you go, <laughs> to Wurzberger's office to cut the cast off. So they wheeled her in to the office in a wheelchair, cut the cast off, and she comes walking out like no big deal. <laughs> And Leo said to the people waiting in the waiting room, that's the best doctor you'll ever find. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have. Anybody have any questions?
just wanted to tell you a really funny story about your dad's invention. Around 1974, one of my best friend's moms worked for him and was sewing, and I believe it was down on the main street storefront right. building. So April Fools rolls around. We're in school, high school, and she gets her mom to bring one of the leg casts home and a pair of crutches, and she comes to school that day, pretends to have a broken leg, and she fooled us all, and at the end of the day, we got, everybody helped her, carried her books for her, got her lunch for her. Mm -hmm. She just milked us for everything she could, and so at the end of the day, I said, you know, can I just borrow that for this evening? My boyfriend's supposed to pick me up at 5.30, and I'd really like to play a trick on him. Yeah. And she took it off, and I put it on, and he picked me up, and he was just flabbergasted. Oh, my gosh, what happened to you? What happened to you? Well, I was running through school, fell downstairs, broke my leg, so he waited on me all evening. <laughs> got me anything I wanted, made me iced tea, you know, the whole nine yards. And I don't think any of us had ever seen anything so funny, because until he invented that, the whole concept just didn't exist. No, uh, it was not really anything you could do on a spur of the moment. Like no, that. and no one questioned they yeah. assumed it was real, and it was right. a oh, lot yeah. of fun to play with. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, any, any of those old stories, I, I've never heard that one, but, you know, these are the, these are the three that, that stood out right. for us. There are a lot of crazy stories. I worked in that building a year and a half later. I think Chris hired me, but David originally asked me. They were just looking for some extra help, and... There was me and another girl. We were such fast sewers that all the other women were sewing downstairs. The cutting was going on upstairs. They gave us two brand new machines because we could spit this stuff out like no one had ever seen. And the first time I got to see where an order was going, I'd never seen a, a bill of lading for $125,000. And I, I was like, what? And it was going to some Arabian horses across the world. Yeah. And we, we felt incredibly special to be making something going to Arabian horses. But we had a lot of fun up there. We got oh, yeah. crazy and laughed and half the time weren't really producing very much. But David and Chris were a lot of fun. And they were very good to us. They cared about oh, us. Yeah. Very respectful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is his great granddaughter running around here, too. <laughs> <laughs> His first and only so far, but another on the way. Any other comments or? Mark, I well remember Doc Lover as a legendary Tail Twist Reliance Club in the state of Kansas. Uh, he was extremely good in uh, fundraising and in uh, and people. He, he could do it in such a way that it brought about a lot of camaraderie. Sure. Yeah. He was extremely good. Yeah. He always campaigned for things in Dora. Like he was, you know, for a long, long time, he tried to get a swimming pool in Dora. Because uh, he'd have to take his kids to Baldwin if they wanted to swim in a swimming pool. And that just hurt him to no end. So he, he really campaigned to get a swimming pool. And of course, it took a long time for it to happen, but it, it finally did. So, yeah. That's the roundhouse thing that kind of. Yeah, that was another one of his things, the roundhouse at 1219L. That was another, uh, yeah, another, another uh, one of his uh, business ventures. That, uh, and, and they built a few of those over the country. Uh, I actually lived there or bought that uh, because I was working for Jay Grostadere and not doing anything with my money. And he said, you know, we need to sell this house. You need to buy it as a... As a uh, Investment, you can rent it out, and so that's what I did. I bought it and made the payment. I think my payment was like sixty-seven dollars a month, <laughs> you know. And, and, and I rented it out. I think I got a hundred. I think I got a hundred and twenty-five dollars a month for it when I rented it out. And then as soon as I got married, I kicked the renters out and moved in myself. <laughs> which was nineteen seventy-five. By the way, my wife Kim is here. And my uh, oldest son, Brandon, and then Ryan, my sister Joy, Kim, Mallory, my mother, or mother, <laughs> daughter-in-law, Blakey. Blakey. Any other comments? If your dad was a great um, person, he 
provider to organizations also. Oh, yes. There are some of them here that our parents were in the 2W club. Oh, yes. Two, yeah, two, me. Two, 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 Sure, sure. Yeah, he was, he was very generous. He really was. After he made it, he was, of course, in the, in the old days, he didn't have a lot of money to spread around. But uh, after OCL was successful, uh, he, uh, he did help out a lot of people. Any other questions or comments? I worked for him for a while at the desk, front desk, when people would come in and greet them. And, and he was he was a funny Good guy to work for. Yep, we all miss him. Yes. Did you know they have a Christmas tree hanging from the ceiling, or was it in the playpen? <laughs> I haven't heard that story. <laughs> what did you? That's what Mom, Mom used to. You'd probably say we need to cut a hole in the ceiling and just lower it down into the attic. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> all right. No, I don't think we had that. I know we didn't cut a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> I know we didn't do that. Threatened to do it. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I guess that's all I've got. I hope I was good at it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, Mark. Yeah. Meetings adjourned.